Okay, chapter five is on topics in trigonometry, and section five one is an introduction to trigonometry. And you may recall, or you may want to look back over, but in section one five, we went over the equation of a circle centered at the origin, and the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals one if the radius is one. And this circle right here is referred to in trigonometry as the unit circle. And you can get all of your trig functions from this uh, unit circle right here. Well, you may remember that the uh, circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r. And on the unit circle, the radius is 1. So the circumference of the unit circle, the distance going around the unit circle, is actually 2 pi. And you may also know that there's 360 degrees in a circle. So from this, we have two ways of measuring the distance around a circle. We can measure it in terms of the angle, uh, so many degrees. And we could also measure it in terms of the radians. And radians means the, the amount of radiuses that you've gone around the circle. So if the radius is 1, then the uh, distance around the circle is 2 pi. And we kind of refer to this as like our, our base unit that we deal with here of a radius of 1 with a, with a unit circle. And that gives us an equivalency between degrees and uh, radians. 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. And there's, there's those are the two ways that we measure at, uh, going around a circle, and that's where your trig functions come from. Now, if 2 pi equals 360 degrees, then pi equals 180 degrees. So in terms of the circle up here, um, 360 degrees in a circle going around, and there's also 2 pi radians going around. Going halfway around the circle, you've gone pi radians, or the angle going around would be 180 degrees. If you go a fourth of the way around the circle, that would be pi over 2 radians, or in other words, 90 degrees, and let's say you go here to 45 degrees, that would be pi over 4 um, radians, or 45 degrees. Now, you can convert from uh, radians or degrees, or from degrees to radians, by setting up a little proportion. And you can always set it up like 360 is to 2 pi, as however many degrees you have is the x radians. And when you solve this, you could just cross multiply and get 360x equals 90 pi, 40 times 2 pi, and then at that point solve for x by dividing by 360, and you would get x equals 90 pi divided by 360. This reduces to, well, 90 divides into 360 four times, so it reduces down to pi over 4, so therefore 45 degrees is equal to pi over 4. If you have an angle that uh, is measured in radians, pi over 4 radians is equal to how many degrees? Well, set up your ratio again. 360 degrees is the 2 pi radians as x degrees is the pi over 6 radians. Now cross multiply, and the uh, you'll have 360 times pi over 6. 360 divided by 6 is 60. 60 times pi is 60 pi. That's from taking the pi over 6 times the 360. And then that equals 2 pi x. Divide both sides by the 2 pi, and we get, well, 60 divided by 2 is 30, and the pi's divide out, so we'll just get 30 degrees. So pi over 6 is equal to 30 degrees. And we can convert these on an Excel sheet called the trig sheet, and we'll do that right now. If I go to the uh, um, Excel sheet and go far out to the right, I get to a sheet called the uh, trig sheet. And on the trig sheet, if I scroll to the right, is a place where I can convert from degrees to radians or from radians to degrees. Like if I wanted to know what is 30 degrees equal to, I just type in 30 here, and it tells me this many radians, which is equal to pi over 6. Now, if you use anything for further calculations, like if I'd like to know, oh, I'd like to put in my radian measure here, you could do equals and click on this cell. Don't use any cells in here that say pi over anything for further calculations. Uh, that's because they're formatted differently and will not give you the right answer. So you would use this cell if I wanted to know what the sign is or, or whatever of this many radians. And if I click here and hit enter, that's actually what the sign of 30 degrees is. Now if I wanted to switch from radians to degrees, here I could type in a certain radian measurement and I would type that in by doing something like equals pi Let's say I'm going to do pi over 2. So I would do equals pi, open parentheses, close parentheses. You need the open parentheses and close parentheses to, uh, that it knows that it's the number pi, not the word pi. And then divide by, let's say, 2, pi over 2. That's how you would type that. Hit equals, hit enter, and you get 90 degrees. And um, that's you know how you can convert from degrees to radians. And let's move on here. Now, when we measure degrees and radians on the unit circle, they're measured in trig 
going around counterclockwise from right here, from the x-axis. So an angle of 90 degrees would be right here, 180, 270, 360, or in terms of radians, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi going around. So that's the way you measure it. And then there's easy points to deal with on this because since the radius is 1, this point right here is 1, 0. This point here is 0, 1. This point here is negative 1, 0. And this point here is 0, negative 1. So actually from that we can get some sines and cosines of some values because actually the sine is, you've probably heard of it before, but it's just the y value of the unit circle. And the cosine is just the x value of the unit circle. So when we go zero radians around a unit circle, let's go back and take a look at that. When we go zero radians around a unit circle, and somebody says, what's the sine value? Well, they're saying right here at this spot, what is the height? Well, the height is zero. So the sine of zero is zero. Sine of zero degrees or sine of zero radians is zero. The cosine of zero is one because that's the x value right there. Now, if you go up here and, say, and somebody says, what is the sine of 90 degrees, which is the same as pi over 2 radians? So they could say sine of, sine of 90 degrees or sine of pi over 2. Well, that would be the y value of this point, which is 1. The cosine of 90 degrees or pi over 2 would be the x value of this point, which is 0. And over here, the sine value of pi, or 180 degrees, is 0, and the cosine is negative 1. Down here, the sine of 3 pi over 2, or 270 degrees, is negative 1, and the cosine is 0. And then you could go over to here again, which is 0, or 2 pi. See, it repeats. So the sine of 2 pi, or the sine of 360 degrees, is 1. You could flip, go on around here, 720 degrees. Here's maybe 90 plus 360, which is 450 degrees. You can even go backwards here and say, what's the sine of negative 90 degrees? Well, that means you're going the opposite way. You're going clockwise. So the sine of negative 90 degrees, or negative pi over 2, would be the y value right here, which is negative 1. And the cosine of negative 90 degrees would be uh, 0. At least one other trig function is nice to know, and that's the cosine and sine of 45 degrees. At 45 degrees, that's on the uh, line y equals x, so both the x and y value would be the same. So we could substitute in x for y into the unit circle and get x squared plus x squared equals 1, or in other words, 2x squared equals 1. Divide by 2 and you get x squared equals 1 half. Take the square root and you get the square root of 1 half or 1 over the square root of 2. And you could rationalize the denominator by multiplying the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 and you get the square root of 2 over 2. And so the sine of 45 degrees and the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. Now we can get these values on the uh, Excel sheet as well. Like right here, if I want to know what the sine of pi over, uh, I forgot the equals here, equals pi over 4 is, I could just hit enter after I type in pi over 4, and it tells me it's 0 0.7071. That's what the square root of 2 over 2 is, and over here it gives you what it is, you know, written out with the square roots and so on. If I'd like to get the sine or cosine or tangent and all that for pi over 4, I could just pull this down, and it makes all these pi's over 4's, and this tells me what the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant is of pi over 4. Another one that comes up often is uh, pi over 6. So if I do pi equals pi over 6 and hit enter, this would be what the sine is of pi over 6. And if I can pull that down, that will tell me what the sine, cosine, and so on is of pi over 6 in terms of decimal approximation and exact value. And another one that uh, comes up often is pi over 3. If I do that one then and pull that down, then you can get the a sign of all those radio measures. Now, if you'd like to deal with degrees, you can do that right here. Like if you want to know what is the sine of 30 degrees, which is the same of pi over 6, it's 0.5. How about the cosine of pi over uh, uh, 3, which is 60 degrees? You can type that in here and get what the cosine is. So you can see that these flip-flop here. Like if I do the cosine of 30, I get this right here, which is actually uh, that square root of 3 over 2, where this is the decimal approximation for it. And here's the sine of 60 they'll be the same. Now if you go on around the unit circle, uh, the sine of let's say 120 degrees is still positive, but the cosine of 120 degrees is negative because you're over on the negative side of the, uh, of the uh, unit circle. So the sine is positive in these two quadrants because the sine is the 
y value and the cosine is positive in these two quadrants because the cosine is your x value. So that's a good way to remember the sine and cosine.